sparkly. I'm bubbly. And together, we're Mineraqua. The fresh, sparkling water for those who are bubbling over with life and crave new experiences. Are you thirsty for adventure, more laughs, and more excitement? With Mineraqua in hand, it's easy to live life with sparkle. Just look for the glass bottles with tiny bubbles wrapped in blue. And you'll taste and feel the difference of Mineragua sparkling water. Mineragua, ha, get your fizz. Odyssey now has hundreds of new exclusive music stations for you to discover your new summer soundtrack. Get moving with worthy workouts for a cardio sesh fueled by today's top artists. Hang in with your crew? Throw it back with Picnic Party for old school jams for your cookout. Or sail away with Odyssey's new yacht rock station, Jugger Yacht. There are hundreds of new exclusive stations to check out today. For summer barbecues. Road trips. Or relaxing poolside. For every move, every interest, every passion. By Odyssey. Odyssey. Brought to you in part by Macy's and Geico. Hey, all it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. This is the Men's Room. Get it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The Trippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hitmen, all gathered in secrecy and flying eyes at night. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. It's on the first standing by. We'll take color nine now at 844-999-OLA, and you'll play Profile This in minutes. But first, Bob, and we made it to drink it time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And The Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve at Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we chose 27-year-old Ayubov Mushueva of Mother Russia, specifically Moscow. Now, some of you don't recognize that name, but you, you know who she is. I'll let you pretend you don't, because maybe your wife or kids are in the car. It's Lola Taylor, the blonde porn star. Go ahead. Act like you don't know who she is. All right, now, we brought this up earlier, but what she's doing, I mean, it's ridiculous, but it makes a whole lot of sense. Now, she is currently in isolation right now in Moscow, Russia, and like a lot of places, she's saying, look, man, if I leave my home before the end of the quarantine, there is a distinct possibility that I will be arrested. And frankly, nobody wants to be arrested. Nobody wants to be sick and arrested. But what do you do? I don't care who you are, all of us, whether you buy into this or you do not buy into this, planet Earth has shut down for business. All of us would like this to be over as soon as possible. And the truth is, even people that didn't believe in science before, starting to rely on the scientists now, hoping we can come up with what will be a vaccine or a cure. Doesn't matter which one, we'll take either one. So what does she decide to do? Test kit? Yeah. If we can get test kits at the hospitals you're encouraging us to go to, just the small details. Now you're thinking to yourself, the hell is a porn star going to do? To help us find a vaccine. She offered up the one thing that we know her for. Basically, she has said this. She will have sex with the first scientist who finds a cure for coronavirus. Again, her real name is Ayuba Bushueva, currently in isolation. Think about this. She made the announcement on her Instagram. Her fans are very excited by it. And you know what that tells me? A lot of her fans are scientists. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what field of science you're in. A lot of people have upped their game. And you might think it's funny. You might think it's petty. You might think it's ridiculous. It is all of those things. But I'm telling you, it's a motivating factor. I want to put this into perspective. Mike Hawk told me about this. All right. So she will have sex with the first scientist to come up with the vaccine. When it comes to sex, I want you to think about a sloth. Sloths are so slothy that they're called sloths, right? We recognize that. They're very slow. They don't move fast for any reason. Mike said he was watching a documentary. So picture this sloth is the scientist. This sloth hears the mating call because it's that kind of season. It's a female sloth. She might be up to two miles away. And I want you to remember that a sloth exceptionally slow. And it lives in the same place with things like tigers. That's why it lives where it lives. This thing heard the maiden call. This thing swam like Michael frickin' Phelps to get there and get him some booty. So I'm telling you right now, uh, Lola Taylor here, she's going to get this done for us somehow. You might not take her up on the offer, but the motivation is And inspire is people to want to go into the field of science. Yeah, honestly. Like, if Neil deGrasse Tyson can't do it, I bet you Lola Taylor can. Because if Neil deGrasse Tyson said, 
I love sex, but the first sign to, we'll be sick forever. Mm-hmm. Lola Taylor, I'm saying the cure, <laughs> it's getting closer. So to Lola. For He's got to figure guns. out a way to travel out of the country. That's all it is. Well, I think you would bring the vaccine to her. And then You follow what I'm you saying? You'd be good. You're good to go. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch hola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, it's Stephen Throw Hogan, you please tell everyone how Profile This is played. I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth, Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Candy. Welcome to the men's room. Hi. Hola. Hola. Candy, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you guys? We're doing wonderful. Are you uh, you staying at home through this? I'm trying to. Okay. You're trying trying to. What is preventing you from being able to do that? Well, I need toilet paper. What can I say? Have you been able to find it anywhere? Yes, I have. <laughs> but you're not telling Walmart anybody where it is. Oh, Walmart has. Okay. So uh, the chicken cleaner, yeah. Candy Bits. Candy, honestly, everyone's saying the bidet. I might order one. Like, this is my excuse maybe to order one and get the, the backside spritzer going on there. But mm-hmm. time to 35 bucks on Amazon. I'm in. So, Candy, are you working? Yes, I am working. And uh, And what do you do? I'm an in-home caregiver. I have job security. Thank goodness. How many are people weirded out seeing you, though, because maybe they haven't left their home and you're coming in from the outside? Have you gotten any of that yet? Uh, not too much. Okay. He's not too worried about it. I, I use my precautions, you know. Is it mostly the elderly that you're helping out? Uh, disabled in this case. Okay. And is there a general concern among your patients that, you know, the just the threat of this whole thing? Because they're oh, in a com- yeah. they might be in a compromised situation, depending on you know why you need to be. Wait, why let's you need ask to be the there. real question: When you go, yeah. you're going to so you go to people's homes, and that's where you provide the care. Yes. Have you ever stolen their toilet paper? Be honest, because I'm not above it. No, I haven't stolen. I have mooched a couple of them. I was yeah. going to say, so when, you can play some away games. You know what right. I mean? Like when you're in their places, so and, just hold it until you get there. You know what I mean? You got more of a stockpile <laughs> at uh, at, at your right. own home. All right, that's Candy. Right. Here we go. All right, Candy, you understand how this here game is played? I think I do. Oh, boy. Well, it's a real easy game to play. I'm going to offer you one of three stories first. Now, two of the stories, they deal with ethnicity or race. So you will have to guess who you believe uh, is responsible for the story. The other story deals with drug usage. In other words, I will share the story with you. Uh, They will have some behavior different from us sober folks. And you have to guess what drug they were on to do the things they did. So your options, again, you can choose to investigate via ethnicity slash race or by the drug they're on. Which one would you like? I'll I'll go with drugs. Drugs. Uh, You know what? I had a feeling you would. You probably know a little bit about drugs in your world, don't you there, Candy? A few, a few. Okay. Your name is Candy, so by birthright, you can't not have done drugs. It's just how it is. Um, mm, yeah, I plead the fifth on that one. Mm-hmm. If hey. you went by Candace, you've never touched a drug in your life. If you're Candy, oh yeah. Any of your patients ever try to hit on you when they come over? Always. Always? <laughs> Almost always. <laughs> at, at, at first. Okay. Uh, is it? <laughs> what, what is the profile of the guys that are hitting on you? Um, men with yeah. penises. A man with penises, yeah. but they don't look usually like this, like paraplegic. Okay, do you do? You, I mean, when you go over and care for people, do you bathe them as well or anything like that? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Okay, it's, has yeah. anyone giggled when you're bathing them? Because to me, that'd be the most uncomfortable part. Uh, uh yes, giggle. Yes, I'm I guess sorry. if you're if you're paraplegic, you probably can't get excited, correct? Correct. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I don't think you can show your excitement. You can be excited. I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. Okay. But it's like being like the Pope. You just keep a straight face. All right. All right, Candy. Here is your story. I want you to guess the drug. I will give you an option of one of four drugs, but your story first. Okay. A woman is facing okay. felony charges after police say she stabbed a man several times and then choked him with a necktie. Misty Melton, 39 years old, was charged with first-degree assault and armed criminal action. Now, the victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition after she stabbed him in the throat and the upper torso. Now, the victim told police that she'd been hanging out with Melton that evening. They were drinking, doing some drugs, and then she got mad because he wouldn't go out and get more of the drug they were doing. 
That's when the victim said Melton was acting like two different people. She was kind one minute, upset the next. And at some point, the victim said that Melton started attacking him with the knife. A witness saw part of the encounter, reported that Melton had straddled the victim and attempted to strangle him with a necktie. So Melton, when they arrested her, she told police that the victim had assaulted her first. But he gave a different account of the encounter. Either way, she's being held without bond. Uh, the first degree assault charge carries a possible life sentence. My question for you, Gandhi, is the drug that you think this woman was on that provoked her to stab someone and try to strangle with them a necktie, do you believe it was? Cocaine, methamphetamine, marijuana, or crack? Hmm. I'm going meth. Go oh, meth? <laughs> Does it say where yeah. the story is? Oh, man. I'm trying to. Did, did I believe Illinois? Illinois. Okay. Yeah, meth. You think about it? Even though one of the people attending there had a necktie. I'm not saying oh, it's impossible. Yeah. Just when I picture methamphetamine, I, I picture cocaine. So that, 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 that's exactly what I was thinking about, too. Just based oh. on the profession of wearing a suit. Wearing a shirt, wearing a tie, and then that tie being out and available to right. be able to strangle I mean, someone. It, it sounds, been... like, sounds like someone came home from work, uh, laid that stuff out after they got undressed, got in some comfortable clothes, but it's still available. Now, that said, he could have been butt naked except for a necktie, in which case I would say crack. Candy, have you ever been around anybody on methamphetamine? Uh, yes, I have. Of course you have. And what was the situation? Uh, well, one night at 7-Eleven was one of them. 7-Eleven then, on the bus, yeah. That's... I watched the guy smash two cell phones trying to break an apple on the sidewalk this morning, and I'm pretty sure that's what he was on. He seemed a little bit angry, to say the least. He was having a tough time. But you're going to go with meth. I'm, I'm sticking with meth. Okay. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Candy and Don't ever say that to the cops. Candy knows <laughs> meth. Candy, I think I'm in between coke and crack here. He means like right now he can't decide because, which drug to Because do. he wanted to go get more. So she wanted him to go get to more get drugs. Money. He would not, and that's when but she But meth lasts him. for a longer time than not. So that's why I'm thinking maybe cocaine or crack, because especially crack is a short-acting drug. I think I'm going to go crack, because crack is whack. All right, Candy. We're going to find okay. out if this uh, lovely lady was on cocaine, methamphetamines, marijuana, or crack cocaine next. That was a tease. You are listening to the Mentor Radio Network. I'm sparkly. I'm bubbly. And together, we're Mineraqua. The fresh, sparkling water for those who are bubbling over with life and crave new experiences. Are you thirsty for adventure, more laughs, and more excitement? With Mineraqua in hand, it's easy to live life with sparkle. Just look for the glass bottles with tiny bubbles wrapped in blue. And you'll taste and feel the difference of Mineraqua sparkling water. Mineraqua, ha, get your fizz. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. My dad used to say that. Sure, yeah, it's from Geico. Yeah, whenever I would ask my dad for life advice, he'd sit me down and say, son, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. And look at me now, a well-adjusted adult with a drawer full of plastic bags I'll never use. <laughs> okay, I'm confused. Was your dad a licensed Geico agent? Nah, he was just a real good dad. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right, we're going to Illinois. Um, profile this. we got a couple hanging out. They're doing some drugs together. Mm. Then they run out of the drugs. Uh-huh. And the woman says, hey, why don't you, the boyfriend, go out and buy some more drugs? And the boyfriend says, hey, I'm not going to go out and buy some more drugs. So the woman then takes a knife and stabs him in the neck and then the lower torso before trying to strangle him to death with a necktie, she was arrested. Which generally, I think you reserve that type of behavior for, say, they ran out of a chicken sandwich at a Popeye's, but that's just me. But, Candy, we asked you, did you believe that this woman, the stabby woman and the stringly woman, was on cocaine, methamphetamine, the marijuana, or crack? And you instantly said meth. You just said, man, it yeah. seems like meth to me. Know your meth. Oh, Candy, you do. Nice work. I knew it. All right. I knew it. Very good. Careful, TV News all time. It's time for TV time with 10. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, I'm again. the men's room presents TV time with 10. Ah, oh, look who so close. Mike Hawk in the house. Yes, I'm not Ted, but I will be doing TV time for today. Have we, uh, is Ted doing okay? I know we've uh, got some communication out there. He's feeling a little bit better. I shot him a text before the uh, before the show today. He's, he's uh, suffering from some flu-like symptoms. He's... He's not feeling too good, okay. so he's gonna he's gonna power th- power through this thing. 
and do the smart thing. Not go to work. Correct. Stay at home and wait and see what the what what's going on with you before right. you make the decision we, to come back to work. We don't know if he's got the uh, the worst case scenario there, but we're not going to take that chance. Yeah. And the worst case scenario is is that Mike gave him whatever he had on the <laughs> that's on right. Thursday show. That's, and that's right. Mike was off on Friday. Thus, now Ted has it. It's a domino. Effect. And that's why you stay home. Actually, yes. I found out I wasn't even friggin' sick. I'm pretty sure I wasn't sick. I woke up that morning. I had some weird symptoms that didn't feel quite right. I had slept way too much, and so I was convinced I was fighting something off. Sure, right. So I texted Robin. I texted Castle. I said, guys, what do you think? They said, dude, stay the hell home. You don't yeah, want to come sure. in here. No, that's, that's, so, that's, that's, that is no, the no. smart call. Mate, right. uh, keep in mind, when people say, man, stay home, you don't need to be here, what they're saying is, Keep your sick ass away from me. Right. Make no mistake about what that is. That's exactly. Keep your sick ass home. So moving on, uh, something else that everybody had to face over the weekend is the first weekend probably in the history of this nation with sports TV is a weekend with no sports on. It was a little strange. It was strange, and I was oddly productive this weekend. I'm about to say, what, what all did you guys do when there was actually no sports on TV? Because we were, we were ripe into the uh, the XFL season at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Spring training for baseball is actually wrapping up. We were about to, about to approach... Uh, uh, opening day, yep. NBA's in full effect, There's March Madness. one sporting event going on right now, basically, in the world. We're about to get to that, Miles. Okay. So so what did you watch over the weekend instead? I, I know, Robin, I think you picked up a couple new TV shows that you were watching there in, in place of all the sports that I know that you watch. Yes, exactly. You know me. I uh, had to fill in the gaps. No, Hulu has a reboot of the movie High Fidelity, so it's a show now. It's only like seven or eight episodes. It has Zoe Kravitz in it. So, guys, you're welcome. (laughs) Um, And in this one, she owns the record store that John Cusack did in the movie. So if you like the movie, you'll probably love the show. That's solid. And digging back into Scrubs because, you know, what else do I want to see but a bunch Mm -hmm. of doctors right now? You watch your comfort (laughs) shows, absolutely. Miles, how about you? Anything? Uh, HBO, I'll watch. Uh, I've been catching up on the, the new uh, season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Nice. I watched Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Uh, Bill Maher's not really my, my cup of tea anymore. For some reason, he's just rubbing me the wrong way. So okay. I've been watching him as much. I do watch S. Creek on Netflix. I'm in season number four. That is an absolutely hysterical show. If you're a fan of Spinal Tap, uh, Best in Show, Waiting mm-hmm. for Guffman, any of those, uh, this is just a, a fantastic show. And I'm still working my way through uh, The Morning Show. Oh, gotcha. Which one Which is that Reese, on again? I wanted uh, to see that. that. Is that is, Amazon? That is on Amazon Prime. That is correct. Gotcha. So, the good news is, is that if, like any other discussion, you get in with a bunch of friends. Or is it Apple TV, I think. You gotta, yeah, you're right. Apple you're TV. right, it is yeah. Apple TV. You got to watch this. You got to watch this. You got to watch that. You got to watch this. Guess what? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, like, this is the time to stream. I, uh, I did watch uh, Saturday. I didn't feel great. but uh, So I'm laying in bed and I watched UFC with no one in the, it was in Brazil. Oh, and they had nobody in the stands. But what was crazy about it, man, so I'm fascinated by this. There's, there is no one in the arena, but when they finally get to the main event, just like any main event, in spite of no one being there, they still did all the things with the strobe lights. Nice. Both fighters come out to their uh, their entrance music, but the guy in the ring, the the announcer. Yeah. And this guy, is, I mean, he's on. Was right? it Bruce Buffer? I, uh, or is he bald? Brother sometime. I don't know. It's a bald dude. Who, well, whoever he was. I mean, he has the voice. He has the pipes. He knows how to do it. Everything is big and dramatic. But it's crazy to hear the introduction of a fighter, right? So, for example, it'd be like, Mike the Hammer! Ha! Dead just silence. Dead silence. No. Then the other guy, right? He's facing our champion, you know, hailing from Brasilia, Brazil, <laughs> Santiago, Jose! Oh, no. I'm, but, dude, every punch, I mean, <laughs> like, probably here at all. It, I will put it this way. You realize the brutality of it when you can just hear every, I mean, grunt to the face, man. I'm like, Jesus. Hey, it was, it was crazy. It was still entertaining, but it was just very odd, you know, to, to raise the winner's hand at the mm-hmm. end, and there's just silence. And then after that, for whatever reason, uh, our TV connection started glitching last night. Okay. So we're trying to watch different things, and it just didn't matter what we went to. And it's that weird digital glitch where one image dissolves, but the other one's there. The audio gets better. Gotcha. Got annoying. We stopped. And then this morning, the Internet was completely dead. And let me just say, for children that are not home from school, the Internet not working is akin to, oh, I don't know, you have leprosy, and the house is on fire, and there's mm-hmm. no way out, and you're getting shot at with guns. Mm-hmm. These kids... Let's, uh, let, let's hope that doesn't happen if we have to broadcast live from your home. What, yeah, leprosy? Right? No, the fact that your internet will go down. <laughs> yeah, I can't guarantee anything, yeah. dog. We right. uh, we were not happy about that. I bet. But so, uh, the kids, they, they finally, this morning, as they are 
They're very upset about the internet. And I understand. Either they're going to play games or watch their dumbass shows that they like. And uh, so I said, look, man, they kept fighting about it. Finally, just pulled the, grab a book, put your ass on that sofa and read for a while. There so they go. did. They calmed down. And as I was leaving for work, I hear them. They are now going to play Truth or Dare. Oh, fun. No, I told them as your parent, I'm leaving. I don't I don't want to know any of your truths because you're going to get in trouble. I don't want to know. Well, while everybody else was not watching sports, my uh, TV <laughs> schedule was basically on its same track. So I actually watched a little bit of Jeopardy over the weekend. And uh, we got this brilliant clip by Alex Trebek, who is bringing the entertainment these days. Jessica Rabbit, you're going to you're going to wrap up the week with us. And your last name is not Rabbit, it's Babbitt. It's a common mistake. This is not my day for name. This is Alex Rebeck saying goodbye until tomorrow. The man has been doing this show for what, 25, 30 Jessica years? Jessica Rabbit. And he can still screw up a name like a champ. I love it. Make your head whip around, though, if you're watching. One pay attention. Like, Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> it is Jessica Babbitt. Babbitt. <laughs> Babbitt. With a B, Babbitt. So, as uh, Miles, as you said, not all sports are canceled. Good news, there is one sport left standing in the world, and it is... Dog sledding. The Iditarod. The oh, Iditarod. Yeah. With limited crowds. So this year's course for the Iditarod uh, dog sled race is 975 miles long. Just think about that for a second. It has already begun uh, last Sunday, and many racers reached the halfway point this last Thursday. There have been some changes. Race officials postponed the Meet the Mushers event this coming Saturday, as well as the awards banquet, which was set for Sunday. I know that you guys were planning on going to that, but uh, they've, they've, they've postponed that for now. They're also urging fans not to show up at the finish line, and they are also rerouting the course a little bit moving checkpoints outside of communities and they've put up barricades to keep the public away. The mushers will still get the usual food drop uh, for bags, straw for bedding and other uh, other supplies. Okay. I'm assuming that revolution will not be televised. I've never seen the idea of te- televised. Right? I've seen highlights, but you figure some Are there highlights? They're just out in the what middle. What is a of highlight? <laughs> what is a highlight from the idea of Here's the winner. I, I mean, it's not like I, you get a NASCAR yeah, car wreck. You don't, don't see a dog fight. I mean, it's I've like, never seen two sleds close to each other unless you're going mean. through a town. It's so. like you see a guy on a sled, <laughs> right. and he looks cold. But you'd figure in this drought that ESPN or somebody would pick it up and just, you know. I'd pick up anything. Fly a helicopter over the top of that thing. Why not? Mm-hmm. You don't have to know who it is now. It's just really slow NASCAR. Over really, really slow NASCAR, <laughs> yes. <laughs> NASCAR is done. Yeah, that's true. We've done May second. Got a handful of uh, of closures there. Talking about the UFC, maybe the fact that they didn't have that audience there, and that's it just right. kind of looked all weird. They've canceled their next three fight promotions as well. Well, the guy that I saw, the guy they're in Brasilia, Brazil. The guy that won, I want to say the main event. He's from Brasilia, Brazil. He's fighting in front of the home crowd, except there was no home crowd. He just knows that they're doesn't home give you the home field advantage too nope. much. Uh, speaking of sports, the NFL has agreed to a new deal for 17 games a season uh, through a collective bargaining agreement, which will uh, run through at least 2030. There will be some significant changes to the schedule. Again, the biggest one: is the players have agreed to expand the regular season from 16 to 17 games as early as 2021. Although it might not happen until 2022. The other big change is that two more teams will make it to the playoffs. Right. One from each conference. Now seven teams will uh, each get in. There will be a total of six playoff games in the first weekend of. The the postseason as opposed to four and only one team per conference will get a postseason by the first week i didn't read this now but i know that the players are getting a larger percentage of a cut of sure correct money and other things but if they are going to go to that seven and, and by the way as far as the nfl goes there, there are some trades and things going on nfl is kind of active right now as far as teams make it some well, sure sure um, so that right. that's one thing that they are reporting on the nfl network and espn uh but uh oh hell i just lost my mind what the hell is i going to talk about I, f- I forgot, sorry. Okay, we'll move on space to hell out. So uh, uh, the virus has kept a lot of people home. We'll get back to them. But one of the uh, the victims of the professional world was the box office. As you guys know that they're saying, everybody stay home, stay in your homes. Uh, don't go out unnecessarily. Some people were crazy enough to actually go out to the movie theater. Of course. Um, so, but a lot of people did not. So the box office took one hell of a hit with it. It uh, says ticket sales in North America hit the lowest levels in more than two decades, generating just $55 million total, which I know sounds like a short amount mm-hmm. of cash. But They're limiting people in theaters as well. Yes. And so, so this was my idea, man. Like, so take like the James Bond flick was supposed to be out. They're pushing it back to what? Like October, November, something. Right. But you've already paid the cash. Like you took the financial hit. Now you're going to lose more money. My thought is as this is going on, everyone's going to the streaming services, right? Right. Speaking of which, uh, real quick here, Disney Plus is going to be releasing Frozen 2, 3 months early for everybody. I just read that. I don't want to repeat it because I don't want my kids here. Oh, you'll see it. I'm serious. Like I, don't, I do not want them to know. And I know. I'm an awful parent. I don't care. No cinnamon toast crunch. Mm-hmm. Don't it's not a bad idea, though, man. Yeah. Taking a lot of the stuff. Not just making it a la carte. Well, that's what I mean. So, like, if you have the new James Bond flick, people that want to see that movie, 
You still charge them 15 bucks, whatever yeah. it is. For a but stream it. You know, why not, man? They're not going to go to the movie theaters. And as the mandates are coming down, they're not going to be able to open these theaters anyway. I but agree. You can still keep people's interest in new release movies. You know, because seldom do you release a movie that people haven't been reading about months in advance. Right. You know, so you, you'll always have the on. I mean, I don't know. That's what I would give it a try anyway. So your top ten here at the, the, the box office. Number ten was Bad Boys for Life. That's the third installment of the Bad I Boys franchise. I think so. Uh, Emma came in at number nine. Call of the Wild, The Way Back. Sonic the Hedgehog comes in at number six on its fifth week. Actually still managed to make really? the top ten. Yeah. Uh, new movie here. The first one at number five is The Hunt. It was that one with Mark Wahlberg, I believe. I actually do kind of want to see that one. I have no what idea. What is it even about? It is about people hunting people, it sounds like. Oh, yeah, The yeah, commercials yeah. are very vague, so I'm not entirely sure oh, yeah, what it's about. But it people hunting cool. people, I'm in. There mm. you go. The Invisible Man at number four. That's one that I'm really wanting to go see, but it's in its third week already. And it's Isn't it weird to say, I saw The Invisible Man? I'm just saying. Oh, not fair. Not not uh, not a bad call there. Uh, number three, Bloodshot. That's a new Vin Diesel movie. Yeah. Mm. Where he plays Vin Diesel playing Vin Diesel. Pretty much. I was going to say, won't Mark Wahlberg just play Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I'm jacked up, dude. I'm here to kick ass. Number two is another new movie, I Still Believe raked in $9.5 million. I don't know that I've heard of that one yet. I have no idea what the hell That's that is. That's got to be some sappy movie. Ew. In my opinion, because I have never heard of it. Uh, number one is Onward, making $10.5 million in its second week. I think that's the new animated Disney Oh, movie? yeah, 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 yeah. I know the one. Uh, Chris Pratt is one of the voices. Like a big snow monster or whatever it is in there? Oh, it's like two kids looking for the other half of their father. That That's all I can tell. Oh, 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 oh. Like the, yeah, okay. Yeah, they have yeah, yeah, his yeah. legs. There yeah. we go. Hmm. Uh, we've also got studios that have suspended film productions amid the coronavirus concerns. Basically, there's a whole bunch here. Batman will hi, uh, the Batman, sorry, it's the Batman, will hi at his filming for two weeks. Netflix's production of its big budget international heist film Red Notice will pause beginning Monday, lasting the next two weeks. It's, it's uh, starring Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, and Ryan Reynolds. Universal Pictures has titles that are going to be on hiatus. Uh, including Jurassic World and uh, Rachel Morrison's boxing biopic Flint Strong. MGM's The Samaritan, starring uh, Sylvester Stallone, went on hiatus. Oh, no, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> Sony also shut down pro uh, production on its live-action Cinderella musical. I know that you're heartbroken, but it uh, unfortunately has. Disney has paused its live-action feature productions, which include the live-action remake of The Little Mermaid, Peter Pan and Wendy, and Shrunk, which is a sequel to the 1980s classic, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I'm like, some of those. Those three right uh, there. Like, well. Hey, look, there's a lot out there we haven't seen yet. Take your time. It doesn't have to be new. To this, be is, good. this is also... Uh, um, I did it again. This is also slowed production of Home Alone, the new Ridley Scott movie, the new Guillermo del Toro movie, and even a couple of Marvel movies. So this thing is stopping everything. Hollywood it in is its tracks. It's stopping everything. Yeah. Miles, like you said, um, NASCAR has been postponed until May 3rd. SNL has been a, is basically on hold now until further notice. That's correct. WWE's WrestleMania is going to go on without any fans in the stands. And you know how big WrestleMania is, and you know what a long broadcast is. Yeah, I don't absolutely. know if you've right. ever gotten WrestleMania before, but it's it's at least six hours. Right. And you're talking in a about... a football stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it seems like 90,000 people, if they can fit them in, go to WrestleMania, right. including the floor and everything else. So this is going to be wild. Right. I mean, just the, the length of time it takes them of to silence. get to the ring. You know what I mean? As far as just the intro goes in these huge stadiums, sometimes these guys are walking 50 yards. But think about even your catchphrases, man. And when you shout your catchphrase, there's some kind of <laughs> right. There's a callback, dude. So you're out there screaming, yes, yes, yes. It isn't just you screaming, yeah, like a crazy person downtown. I'm going to put out a bet right now that this will probably be the most bought WrestleMania probably. in the history of it. Just because, not because so many people love WrestleMania. I know that they do. It's one of the big pay-per-views of the year. But just because this one is going to be historic in that there's going to be nobody there. Sure. But you're going to be it, that it, quiet. It's something that they should always get uh, some, some props for as far as the way the WWE does business and the wrestling industry in general does business. No matter where you are, no matter what night it is, if you go to a live production mm -hmm. of any kind of wrestling event, and this happened in, in Baltimore. There was a, a Monday Night Raw was there back when the WCW right. was still doing their thing. And the arena was... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Halfway full, maybe, at the most. But when you watch that thing on television, they brought everybody down. Yep. Sure. They put blackouts on the seats, like big tarps, so you don't realize that there are empty seats. Yeah, in the it looks full. Gotcha. And the way that they do their camera angles and everything else, I mean, truly, you would think it's a packed house. The way they have everything mic'd, it sounds like right. a packed house. Oh, they know. They're the masters of that. So if anybody can pull this off. 
Here's what I want. The wrestling community can do it. As far as, you know, just, you're still going to get the entertainment. Here's what I want. When the XFL game out here in Seattle was was just going to be done without fans instead of getting postponed altogether, just yeah. shut down altogether, I actually still had media credentials that I was going to be able to go in there and watch the game. I had this plan that while it was quiet in there, and I want this to happen at WrestleMania, that when something happens, I'm just one guy that's like... Yeah! Yeah! Get it done! That's right. <laughs> you were going to be allowed in. That's right. Because you're the media. Right. So you were going to go in there. So that's if- what I want for WrestleMania. I want one dude in the stands just cheering like, Undertaker! Well, they say, yeah, they say only essential personnel are allowed. But you got to think, with that size of a venue, with that size of an event, there's going to be a lot of people down there. Yeah. I mean, just right. as far as the people who have to work it. Uh, as well as UFC, the next three events are going to be postponed, and Regal Nationwide, Regal Theaters Nationwide are actually closed until further notice. Okay. A lot of big changes here. So as for those staying at home, we've got some titles for you to check out on Netflix while you chill in isolation and social distancing. They've got, <laughs> see what I did there? They've got TV shows as well as movies. So the TV shows that you're going to want to check out, get a pen and paper for this. So number 10 is going to be Lock and Key. I haven't heard of half of these. Number nine, rightfully so, is Pandemic, How to Prevent an Outbreak. That makes sense that that would show up now. Absolutely. Uh, The Office at number eight. Is it still actually on Netflix? Didn't it get Take It Down, Robin? It might be on Universal now or something because it was okay. an NBC. I don't know, but if you can find it, I mean, watch I don't. It. I know that's still Friends. on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That one is still on. Friends got taken off. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Altered Carbon. That's one that I've kind of wanted to pick up on Netflix, but I've, I've never seen, actually done it. I've seen bits and bits. Put it this way: I remember watching maybe a season or two, enjoyed it, then forgot about it, and now that you bring it up, like, oh yeah, maybe I should check it out. Absolutely. Uh, Paradise PD comes at number six. Dirty Money at number five. Elite at number. Number four, The Trials of Gabriel Fernandez. That is one that my fiance is currently watching. I know that because of the name, and it is horrifying. All right. What is it? it? Is basically, what it is, if from what I can glean from this, from the bits that I've heard, it is these two parents that already have two kids, but they had a third child that they didn't want. And graphicness warning here, and spoiler, not really a spoiler alert, but the parents basically were incredibly violent to this third kid, Gabriel, and they beat the kid to death. Jesus, man. And it's the trial that ensued of finding the evidence against the parents and everything that happened that could have probably prevented all this from happening. Is this based on a true story? Yes, this is 100% based on a true story. What the hell is wrong with your fiance? Yeah, I know. It's creepy stuff. Uh, Love is Blind at number two and On My Block (laughs) at number one. So those are the shows that you got to watch on Netflix while you're held up in isolation. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. You are listening to the Mentor Radio Network. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. Right, here we go in Seattle, restaurants, bars, and entertainment. Officially shuts down. We head to Ireland where all the pubs and bars closed for two weeks, including St. Patty's Day in each and every town. Porn star says she'll have sex with first scientist who comes up with a coronavirus cure. Florida couple has sex in front of a hospital, the porn category being mature. And in Nevada, brothels will remain open. Customers must wear masks at all times. It is time for your headline. Now, it's time to hit the head. Blinds. Here's my car. All right, our top story. We go back overseas where the coronavirus is causing another sort of side effect. We know that China has taken some serious steps in an attempt to halt the spread of the coronavirus. And one of those steps is a massive quarantine and isolation among its people. While the reported cases are decreasing, it's seen a spike in another statistic. Over 300 couples have scheduled appointments for divorce since the isolation period. Wow. Multiple officials are speculating that divorces are caused by too much time spent together by these couples. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of kids going up for adoption, too. And how long have they been basically isolating themselves over there in China? Uh, It's been a while, a month. 
A month at this point. At least. Uh, in other news, as far as developments around the globe here in Washington State, Governor Jay Inslee announced that they are increasing preventative measures by ordering the temporary closure of bars, restaurants, and entertainment and recreation facilities. He has said that restaurants can still offer carryout orders, which we have named off a, a handful throughout the day. Uh, and pharmacies are still open, as well as groceries, and retail outlets can stay open with reduced occupancy. This comes with an even more confined ban on gatherings of 50 people or more. So earlier it was 250 people. That has been now lowered down to 50 people or more. We shouldn't be shouldn't be having those gatherings. And the president right. came out today and said 10. 10. 10. Criminy. So basically, if you don't have to go to that thing that you're looking at and going to, don't, don't go, man. Right. Don't and it's go. canceled anyway. Yeah, that's, that's the other half of it. Uh, over in Ireland, we're seeing a similar sort of measure being taken. Over 7,000 bars and 50,000 workers will be closed and out of work for two weeks following an order by the health minister following a meeting with officials. So they've ordered a uh, closure of all these bars for two weeks it's because everybody was just still going out to the pub. You know, just kind of business as usual. And they're basically having to close down these pubs in order to keep people right. from going there. So, uh, not all are taking the virus as seriously as others. We head down to Florida where a couple have been arrested for not being socially distanced enough. Not by a long shot. But two were caught engaging in sexual activity outside of a nearby hospital. They were seen by multiple witnesses who got more of a look than they wanted and the pair were arrested. Luckily, the woman was wearing her surgical mask during the incident. Oh, okay. okay. That makes it better. Yeah. She actually pulled it down just before her uh, mug shot. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of surgical masks, we go to Nevada where multiple brothels are even taking some precautions during the outbreak. Brothels in the state are still open for business, but they're asking customers to wear surgical masks when they walk into the establishment and even while they're underway with its employees. Oh, how thoughtful. It'd be like having sex with Bane. Oh, you know incredible. what? That ain't bad. See this? <laughs> this isn't the time to get the designer uh, face mask. Bane's not a bad call, man. I like that thought. I mean, look, like, give her something, too. Like, uh, I'm a superhero. <laughs> you know, or evil villain, whatever. Thank you, sir. And when I say mask, I mean surgical. Don't put on a stormtrooper mask. It's not the same. Right? Yeah. That doesn't work, man. I'm dressed like Baby Yoda. <laughs> Ask Miles about that sometime. It's getting really hard. <laughs> Don't. She wasn't wearing a mask. Oh, no. No. Cut my arm off. Oh, Lordy. A TikTok user from Miami bought some timely culture into what she's calling a, quote, social experiment. Oh, boy, I mean, it's a bad idea. Oh, man. They That's use... what social experiment means. Right. The user posted a video on the app labeled, quote, the coronavirus challenge. No. Don't no, no. do it. No, there's no challenge. Right. The video shows a woman in what appears to be an airplane bathroom while she proceeds to lick the toilet seat. Mm. After being called out by many online, she claims the video was a social experiment, but has yet to disclose what exactly she was attempting to find out in said experiment. What, find out if people think you're a disgusting idiot? Right? Because you've succeeded. <laughs> Done. It should be noted that this challenge is pointless, given that the virus has been shown to have little to no effect on the younger crowd. Who would be the ones to engage in said challenge? And all they're doing is basically becoming carriers for the virus themselves. In short, leave this one alone. Kids, find another challenge to do at home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ridiculous. It is. Again, we've said it multiple times on this program. If anything is labeled as a challenge, I know that we have young people that listen to this show. If anything has been labeled as a challenge, at very least, give it a second look. <laughs> Nine right. times out of ten, don't do it, but at very least, give it a second look. But always think about the word before challenge. Fire. Out. Coronavirus. Right. Out. Right. You don't need to do it. Don't worry. I know that being cool is like the thing that you need right now. Give it ten years. Being cool won't mean a damn thing, and I promise you that. More than that, if licking a toilet makes you cool, you got room for improvement. Fair. 100% fair. A man in North Carolina was arrested for battery after a man set him off for an interesting reason. The man was headed out of the bar late at night, and on his way out, another patron of the bar called him, quote, Drew Carey, due to his likeness of the comedian. This frustrated, man to the, uh, this frustrated the man to the point that he turned around and punched the man in the face. 
It's like a always sunny in Philadelphia reference, I believe, or something. Something like that, maybe. Yeah. That's it for your headlines. With that, Mike Hawk is out. Hey, y'all, local restaurants, if you're doing the to-go stuff, the delivery mm-hmm. stuff, get us the information to the men's room at mensroomlive.com. We'll try to get as much of that out there and drive as much business for you as possible. So please, mensroomlive.com. Take advantage of it, man. Uh, in the meantime, we be out of here, but we will be back tomorrow. Until then, do what you do best, and for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. So I'm replacing you with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders. No more leaks. Just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh, I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on me.